Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about consciousness. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about consciousness. Out in the real world, consciousness isn't really something that we talk about a lot. Really the only time you hear the word at all is when somebody's talking about being unconscious. So then, what is consciousness? Is it just when you're not unconscious? Well, in psychology, consciousness has very distinct definition. Consciousness is when we are aware of two things, things going on inside of us and things going on around us. First, let's take a look at the things going on outside of us because that one's a little easier to understand. Right now, while you're watching this video, you are aware of the things going on around you. For instance, you hear the outside sound of my super annoying voice. If, if I were to change to a robot voice, you would instantly be aware of that change. You're aware of my voice and you're aware that my voice changed badly. Plus, you're aware of all kinds of things happening in the world outside of you the world all around you. Awareness of the light coming in the window or the hum of the AC, uh, the feeling of your feet inside your shoes. Those things that happen outside all around you are called external stimuli. External because they're external to or outside of you and stimuli is the plural form of the word stimulus. In science, a stimulus is just anything that makes you react. So an external stimulus is something outside of you that makes you react. Now, let's swap over to being aware of what's going on inside you. This one is a little harder to understand, but it'll be much easier if I show you with an example. But to do the example, you have to close your eyes real quick. Once they're closed, think about the last time you were hungry. Not just you were a little snacky or eh, maybe you could eat. I mean hungry, like you'd do hurdles over the couch to get to the fridge kind of hungry. Feel how that felt. Now, open your eyes. Remembering that feeling you just felt, that's awareness of a feeling that was going on inside of you. When it's something inside of you that makes you react, that's called an internal stimulus internal inside of you. We feel things inside of us that make us react all the time. Like say the last time you felt cold, you put on a coat. <laughs> or the last time you felt angry, maybe you slammed some doors. Or the last time you felt sad, you ate a whole bag of gummy bears. Maybe true story. Internal stimuli are a big part of what makes you you. When you're able to pay attention to both internal stimuli and external stimuli, that means you're conscious. Scientifically, we know way more about consciousness than we do about unconsciousness. Why? Well, because it's much easier to do behavioral and cognitive tests on people who are conscious. Unconsciousness might even have more to do with being unresponsive to stimuli than not experiencing the stimuli themselves. In fact, when it comes to unconsciousness, there is a whole world out there that we've yet to discover. People report having different unconscious experiences that range anywhere from being aware only of external stimuli to being aware only of internal stimuli to being aware of absolutely nothing at all, not even the passing of time. There might be as many different types of unconsciousness as there are ways to become unconscious, whether it's getting an injury like, say, a car accident where you experience a head trauma, or having a loss of blood, or having low blood sugar, or getting blackout drunk. You can enter a state of unconsciousness lots of different ways, and people seem to experience unconsciousness 
differently. So, if people can experience unconsciousness differently, does that mean people can experience consciousness differently? Since consciousness just means when you're aware of things going on both inside of you and outside of you, then yes, that means you can be conscious in many different states, depending on how aware you are. Since psychologists are kind of bad at naming things, we call these different consciousness states that you can be in states of consciousness. I told you, we're bad at naming stuff. Some of the states of consciousness that have been studied the most are things like people who are in a state of hypnosis, people who are in a mentally altered state from drugs or alcohol, drugs or, alcohol. or people who are in a state of meditation. If you want to know more about some of these other states of consciousness, including answering that epic question, are you conscious while you're sleeping? Make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking and I'll see y'all later. Bye. Consciousness. 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 Conscious. Consciousness. 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 Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't even sound like a word anymore. Hey, you know what's fun? We are. Subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. We're not kidding. We need your subs. It'd really help us out.